best. Don't get your knickers in a twist. You're going to have to get used to these kind of interviews, yeah? Oh, sorry, darling. Are you ready for this? Have you been reading your script? Okay, Sam, I need you to go through these marketing and press statements really carefully, word for word. We know the film's a little bit controversial, and some of these journalists, they can be really sneaky, they can be quite manipulative, they go for all your dirty laundry, all kinds of stuff, so... But we have to be cleverer than them, yeah? So, learn. So, I mean, this wordsmith, uh, is he a goodie, uh, a buddy? I mean, God, he's not going to come from the Daily Mail dressed up as a, a Saudi sheikh, is he? No, no, Balin's fine. He's a kind of, like, BBC4 upstanding kind of gentleman. There's no whiff of Rebecca Brooks's dress or anything on his bed sheets. Don't worry. Max? Promise me, promise me, you're not going to leave me alone with him. I mean, this is my first interview, and I just feel, I just feel really nervous. I'm not going to abandon you. We're friends, right? Just make sure you learn those marketing notes. Yeah, but I mean, what if he starts twisting my words around and, and it makes me look stupid? Oh, God, well, Max, I really don't want to do this. Sam, you've got to remember, this business is all about making choices, career-changing choices. So you need to decide, is it A-list actress in a Beverly Hills mansion, or is it a call centre in Manchester and a bedsit in Blackburn? You choose. Actually, um, I'm not sure, I think you're a bit taller than him. is a heartfelt comedy drama about a mischievous disabled girl, me, uh, and the unorthodox relationship between her and a, a gay male escort. It has subtext reflecting on issues what constitutes uh, as unconventional family. And... <laughs> Can I have, like, an auto cue set up or something? I mean, at least give me post-its. Focus. Be professional. Just have a bit more an air of Maggie Smith, Judy Dench. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Do I look like I've got a purple rinse? I mean, I don't know why I just can't be myself. I mean, be truthful. Listen, when, when, when Ray Winstone and Russell Crowe, yeah, they do their interview for Noah, they don't sit there moaning about the fucking coffee or the fact there's animal dung everywhere or there wasn't enough umbrellas on set. They talk about all the, the truthful, meaningful stuff behind the film, yeah? Please, Noah is not exactly a film that's associated with the word truthful. Sophisticated journalists are interested in the meaning of the film, not the colour of your knickers, all right? Maybe I've not got any on. So you have to be consistent. Make sure you don't go with Okay, right, guys. Hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Just move you out of the way there, little... There, you little tiny thing, aren't you? You don't weigh anything. You're a lot smaller than I thought. Bless your heart. Right, okay, let's get this motherfucking show on the road. Sam, right, all the drugs, the nudity, the, uh, the on-screen sex. How did you prepare for this? Because I hear you're a bit of a method actress. Uh, um... Uh, like, well, the film The Little Devil um, has um, it has a subtext on on relationships, you know, with an orthodox yeah. a, an orthodox gay male male escort. It's unorth unorthodox. It's not Jewish. Uh, okay, um, um, uh, with um, a heartfelt um, um, reflection on you know. Um, okay, so the cocaine that you were selling on set is that was that real drugs? Because you know the the movie industry has got a big problem with drugs, doesn't it? I mean. Basically, a little, um, little rolling drugs mule, aren't you? Um, yeah? But, Balin, I'm, I'm not really sure that Sunday Times readers would be interested in... Oh, that's history now. I'm with Penthouse Magazine now. It's cool, huh? She, she can't really get her tits out uh, here. Max, do you know what? It just happened to me just this minute. I was in the men's room, and I overhear Jared Buckheimer and Michael Bay, and they're beside themselves. They, they, they're struggling to find a director who can handle the, the intimate internal conflict of this, uh, this little tiny disabled robot vacuum cleaner, not you, uh, for the next Transformers movie. Seriously? I shit you not. Champagne's gone right through me. No. What? Is it? Is it Hugh 
choosing. Sam, I'm going to try and get you a part. Try and get you a part in the movie. Just chill, yeah? Right, okay, Sam, so over here. Sam, hi. Right, so you choose. You can either give me this bullshit prepared statement about your philosophical little movie, or you can give me something our readers can jerk off over, hey? Huh? Huh? I mean, well, there was like some vibrations in the film, right? Actually, it was under my pillow. Um, a, li a little one, obviously. I mean, it wasn't mine, but... Um, This like, like this porn scene where we were watching a porno. And it was a real porno, <laughs> and like you know, you could see a lot of like you know tits and ass and all that. And I think there was just one point where they had like you know full frontal, and you could see a pussy and everything. Yeah. No, oh no, it was pierced. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, the party scene, obviously, and all the guys got their tops off, and it was a bit crazy. And then there was this, there was this one guy, and he, like, he, like, he, like, rubbed his face in this woman's tits like this, you know? Lord it was, like, it was, like, so crazy. Were they, like, little, like, hand tools, like yours? Were they big and bouncy? Mm. Were they fake? What were they? Yeah. Excuse me, can I get a photograph taken? Oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Here we go. Oh, lovely. Thank all right, get closer. Get closer. Get closer. Get closer. Maybe just put your... Yeah, just there. Yeah, just like... There. Just touch him a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe grab her boobies, yo. Just grab the boobies. Grab the boobies. Yeah. Sure. Sam, that's Sam. It. you like that. Sam, you like that. You really like that. Oh my god, you know what? I always wanted a an American friend. I really did. I always wanted a little, like, <laughs> little tiny little friend, you know, that I could kind of, I don't know, put in my pocket, take around places, oh. pop out when I need a little party trick or something. <laughs> We're going to be best friends. I can feel it. We're going to be best friends. So Sam, if you could just sign here, uh, and it includes all your commitments to uh, prequels, sequels, reboots, rehashes, reimaginings, that sort of thing. Oh, and the rights to reproduce your image on shampoo bottles, comics, games, toys, dolls, that sort of thing. <laughs> God, I hope we don't blow up dolls. Possibly. You better check with our Taiwan office. Get your agent here to put a call then. Oh no, this isn't my agent. Um, Ian, he's, uh, he's on another gay cruise. This is Marshall. He's my personal assistant. So, where's the section about my Winnebago? Sam, this is a $200 million movie. Even your personal trainer here will have his own trailer. Right, and also, you know the location? It, it will have all the facilities, you know, for, for someone my size, won't it? Our props man will sort you out. He worked on the borrowers. And um, the bit in the contract about my, my fees and, and the royalties, I'll be guessing. Oh. <laughs> That's the script. This is your contract, bottom section. Yeah, that's really good because I, I'm actually hoping that most of the, the money you know, I get from the film will go to the um, Orphans Reunited Trust. It's, it's something really important, you know, it's, it's close to my heart. I'm sure we can arrange that. <clears throat> oh, um, Sam, just a time. 
tiny matter. I've heard a rumor that uh, that you really do have a brittle bones condition. Oh no, don't worry, that was all fiction. It was just um, for a part I was playing. Yeah, um... So you are robust enough for filming. Oh. It's an insurance condition of me offering you the part? Oh no, don't worry, they didn't call me Danger Mouse for nothing in school, you know? I just have a, a, slight, a slight mobility issue. Good, because this is a fast turnaround, 20 setups a day, movie, big, spectacular. It is going to be epic in proportion. You know, every producer in Hollywood is out to steal my ideas. The tabloids even have a bounty out for a leaked copy. This script, my script, is worth its weight in gold. Doubly so if I autograph it. Oh. That will be your new co-star. Sir Nathan, he's here to see you. Send him in. Disability is going to be the next big thing come Oscar season. Fuck AIDS. Fuck the Holocaust. Fuck slavery. You undateables are going to be the new X-Men mutants. But without the special powers. I'm giving Max his um, breakout acting role, probably his last. I'm going to cast him as your love interest. Let's make that your violent, abusive, rapist, psychotic husband. Nathan, why can't I just play alongside her, an able-bodied actor? Just being realistic, Sam. I mean, you wouldn't actually have sexual relations with a normal person, would you? What's wrong with you, then? Gout. Cancer. Really? What type? Didn't I see you, or weren't you doing that Star Wars movie or something last time I saw you? Not working with J.J. Abrams, are you, Sam? No, no, not anymore. Um, somebody won't let me out of a contract. Do I send some history here? Yeah, well, I was in some no-budget film he directed called Little Devil. Never heard of it. I, I, I discovered Sam. So you're a director? Well, yeah, kind of retired. Not an actor. Well, I thought maybe your leading actress could be the one who chooses who her leading man could be. This is fucking outrageous. Do you realise how precious my time is? Can you put me through to casting? She's been blubbing about my disability. Why didn't you return my calls? Could you sink any lower? Wait, you think I'm faking this? Max, why are you stalking me? Because someone has to keep a lookout for your bloody interests. You're not my bloody father, for fuck's sake! Oh, I don't see your friend Balin looking over your toilet paper contract. I can look after my own career now. Really? Have you any idea why the Hollywood Reporter calls him Nutcase Nathan? Look, this movie's going to raise a lot of money for a good cause. OK, for your, for your charities or just another boozy week in Mexico. Look, you're just jealous because Nathan's got four Oscars, 12 Golden Globes and, and, and three BAFTAs. Nathan has also got an ego the size of Wales, obsessive compulsive disorder, and he's also got that fucking ridiculous, stupid moustache. Hi, Nathan. We were just uh, improvising. We've got really good chemistry. You haven't even been in a school play, have you? Sam, should I call security? Who's going to pay for my treatment? Got nothing better to do than chasing hoodies, I suppose, have you? All right for you, you've got a job. I haven't Get got out. a job. It's the car, you 
were in crashes and flips over and over and over and then we cut Flash forward to the new ending where the plane you're in crashes in your throne a forward smash and, and, and you're hit by, by bodies and carnage crash splat into you and, and then there's, there's blood everywhere and the, 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 This will all be done on CGI, won't it? No, 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 no. How I work with my car, Sam, is strictly the method. Everything's done for real, Sam. I mean, Everyone does their own stunts. So, let's see a signature then. <clears throat> I can pay your advance now, of course. I can almost hear that happy laughter of all those orphans reunited with their parents. Oh! <clears throat> That'll be Warwick Davis's agent. He's about the same size as you, right? No, he doesn't need to bring his own Ewok costume. As long as he does his own stunts. And, and he'll do full front, all right? And just, he's not gay, is he? No. Good. Because he'll, he'll do the sex. For real. I want it for real. Great. Sam, you and Warwick Davis are... Quick, quick. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Come here. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Honestly, you did not pay me all you when you're being all. No, down, boy. Come on, got work to do. Get my agents, see what cruise he's on. I want to see uh, how I can get the bidding starting for this. <laughs> you never know, I might be able to get Spielberg somewhere. Imagine getting him a camera against the <gasps> Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> well, to be honest, though, <laughs> by the looks of it, it's a pile of crap. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> See, when I get you home, I've got a tub of Hershey's and a courgette with your name on it. Ooh, tempting me, <laughs> tempting <laughs> me. The blockbuster movie Gone with the Wind 2 appeared in flames. It breaks box office records across the globe. In an unprecedented series of events, its first-time producer and leading lady, Sam Rank, goes from humbling, struggling British actress to super-rich Hollywood royalty overnight. In London at the Flair Film Festival, the movie is about to have its royal premiere. But all the trappings, troubles, and tragedy of fame are never more than a whisper away. Hey, asshole. I thought you were fucking dead. I'm sorry, or was that your career? <laughs> Fuck me. Another snake in the grass. A oh, wanker. Bollocks, yeah? The cancer? How was it? Um, not as bad as your motherfucking cocksucking cunting Tourette's. What the fuck? Jesus. I mean, come on. 
what is this? 24 seven secret service. I can't even take a shit without them following me to the toilet. Samantha, Islamic State is going all out for Western targets. I mean, what about the incident at the BAFTA? You know, when you got your Westwood boob tube slashed. That was just probably one of my exes after me throw. Tiara by Tiffany. Keep that on for the after party. And I don't get this. This speech, this speech has been changed. I wanted to talk about world peace, you know what I mean? I wanted to talk about and uh, highlight issues that children are facing because of global, global conflict. Samantha, they want to hear about the glamorous elements of filming. All that location work across Europe, all the work with the international superstars. Yes, but it's all lies, isn't it? I spent the last six months alone in a green screen studio with blinking ping pong balls stapled to my nipples. Samantha, in your delicate state, you can't be going on location. You can't be working with all those actors. Let the CGI guys look after you. Let them manipulate you, digitally speaking, of course. Yeah, but I really don't want to do any of that special effects CGI crap anymore. I want to be appreciated as a real actress. I want to be a method actor. I mean, I want to, I want to feel real emotion inside, you know, real, real intense emotion. Mm, Samantha, be careful what you wish for. Look, you can tell Jim I'm not going to do Avatar 2, all right? Look, these Harry Winston earrings are going to look great on the red carpet. I mean, at least low-budget films were fun, and they had character. You get your shit together then, and appoint another agent. Sam, Sam, listen. We have to assume Ian will never wash up. I mean, I knew those gay cruisers would be the death pool. Don't say that. You know he was like a father to me. Listen, this show part ring is lovely. Put it on, make sure you pick your nose a lot, yeah? yeah but it's not just Ian, is it? I've got more tragedy going on behind the scenes than I do in front of it. But listen, you're the goose that laid the golden egg. Aren't you happy? I mean, I mean, give the gentleman of the press your $100,000 Damien Hurst pearly white. Smile, Samantha. Come on. Hi. Jeff Charmer, Empire Film Magazine. How long have I got? As long as you like, just don't ask any questions about the last thing. <laughs> Whatever. So, Disney's golden handcuffs. Is it true? What did they offer you? Remakes of The Little Mermaid? Or Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Don't you want to talk about Gone with the Wind too? Not if every other magazine on the planet is covering it. You must know, we are uh, actually in discussion with quite a few production companies on uh, films that don't generally uh, you know, typecast me. Are we? Like? You know, the attack of the 50-foot woman. Sam, tell Jeff about the film you did in Brussels, the battle scene where you upset out the helicopter with Brad Pitt. Not interested. One question. Do you think Hollywood's biggest director, Sir Nathan Cannon Letchworth, wouldn't have turned the gun on himself if he hadn't lost the court case against you? We did just say we're not going to discuss the lawsuit. Give me something. We've held the front page and a full colour supplement for what have we got here? Britain's newest national treasure. It's Tiffany actually, darling. Diamond encrusted. It's called the Devil Child. Jeff, come on now. Who do you think Judge Judy's gonna believe? An innocent, disabled actress without a bad bone in her body? Or an unhinged director with a bad crystal meth habit? I mean, come on. 54 children. That was more than Dunblane, right? Look, listen, Jeff. Studios always have competing subject matter come blockbuster season. I mean, it's just a case of who releases their film first. What I think the public has a right to know is, as a little snake might have told me, is would he have been driven to shoot all those children in the orphanage because someone very close to him had actually stolen the script? No. Preposterous. Jeff, that's enough. Now, interview over. Fine. We'll put fucking Miss Piggy on the cover instead. Sam. Sam, Samantha, curtains up in 20. Samantha, you need to secure with you like a walking hat and garden. Piss off the lot of you. You move out of my way. Out. 
Don't worry, Charles always falls asleep in the first five minutes. Oh, and Camilla's always on Tinder. Scenes with Miss Piggy. Were they shot for real or does she use a body double? Hey, hey, wait, hey! But who is this? Oi! Help! This isn't funny! No, stop! Who is this? Help! Uh, no! Ah! Help! Attack of the 50 foot woman. Incredibly huge, with incredible desires for love and vengeance.